Thank you, Mitya, for the introduction. Uh, let's start. Welcome to the session Code Coverage Mythbusters. Yes, before we start, let us introduce ourselves again. So please welcome on this stage Margarita, my colleague, staff software engineer at Sonar. She's also a Kotlin Google developer expert. So, Laos. Oh. Thanks, and I'm really happy to introduce my colleague, Evgeny, who is principal software engineer at Sonar, and he's also a JCoCo project co-lead. So if you have problems with JCoCo, <laughs> you know yeah. who to ask. <laughs> and um, Let's move on. Yeah. Before we start, yes, we do work in a great company, Sonar Source, creators of Sonar, Sonar Cube, Sonar Cloud, uh, Sonar Lint. You might know these products. Let's do a quick check. Uh, do you know? Do you use? It's okay if you don't use. It's okay if you hate them because we don't care today. Today we are not going to talk about this product. Don't be shy. Raise your hands if you hate them. Um, whatever we are going to tell today is our own opinion, and it has nothing to do with our employer. This talk can still be seen by our managers, you know? Uh, that's fine. <laughs> and there is one more important thing that you should know. I'm Ukrainian. I was born and raised in Kyiv, and the whole my life I spent in Kyiv. And today my country is struggling. We have huge problems with our nearest neighbors. Uh, you probably heard about this. And today we need all the support that people can give to us. So if you feel like you want to make a donation, this is a trusted charity fund that you can use. So feel free to scan the QR and make it. And uh, the most important and the most serious part of the presentation is done. Now let's have some fun. Apparently today I'm going to be responsible for the fun part, right? We all doom, doom the here now. <laughs> okay. So. So have you ever seen Mythbusters? Yes, a lot of people. A lot of people. So usually what's going on? They are two guys who pick up some myth and then they try to um, reproduce the circumstances and either uh, dispel it or confirm it. So we are going to do here the same. We are going to try to uh, dispel some myth about code coverage. What and will be the myth? I think I'll let you pick up the first one. Okay. Let's start with a simple, stupid question. What's your code coverage target when you develop software? When you write tests, do you aim for some percentage uh, of code coverage? Let's check who aims for zero persons like we don't care about tests. Let's just write code. Okay, maybe 30 persons, somebody, higher, 60 persons, of your code oh. by tests, code, whatever, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> 60, 80, who is 80, oh, 80. you are pretty good, oh. maybe 100, who aims for 100, no, almost nobody, okay, maybe 110, <laughs> I am for that, the best coverage ever. Yeah. So, I, I think... The first myth? Yeah, the first myth that code coverage should be 100%, and for some reason people say it. I think it's even written in some books and uh, told by some famous people. And what it means? It actually means that if you write one line of code, whatever this line is, you can write a test to test this line of code. So that's what we'll try to do today. I'll be writing some code, and Evgeny will be writing a test to test it. We will sort of use some ping pong technology at the, uh, here. And because I am a responsible developer, I prepared um, the code. Uh, Evgeny is not. So he'll be writing I'm not tests. Respon responsible <laughs> So developer. he'll be write, writing tests um, live here. OK, so what do we have here? Pretty this simple, is, stupid sum. We need to write some assertions, and thanks God today, no talk happens without AI. I have a copilot. He wrote a test for me. Is it a good test? I don't know. Looks seems, like it's okay. Good, right? like. Uh, ah, sorry. Yes. Let's enter the presentation mode. Yeah. So I think, I it's, think okay. it's pretty yeah. good test. I expect let's, 100 coverage. Yeah, let's, let's run let's, it. Let's run the test. It passes. Yeah. All good. But maybe let's use our favorite tool, JCoCo, okay. to try to generate the report and look at the coverage. Let's generate the report. Oh, then verify. You not expect clean something? Install? No, no clean install. You know, you should not use clean install. So build successful. Perfect. It let's seems look that at everything the report. works. 
Let's look at the record. Ouch. Oops. What's going on? Can you Zero see it? Zero percent coverage. Okay. What, what, think, what I did wrong? I think it's my mistake because I prepared examples for you. And uh, first of all, let's look. Your import says that it's org unit test from where it's coming. Yes, I like gunit fa. What's the problem with gunit fa? Okay, let's look at the POM XML. It's, is it Maven? Yes, it's Maven. So it looks like we have both GUnit 4 and GUnit 5. And is it, it a looks problem? like. No, it's not, because technically GUnit 5 can run tests of GUnit 4. But to do this, we need the Wintage engine. Oh. And uh, please raise your hands if you ever faced the situation where you forgot to put Wintage engine. So in my life, it happened a lot. And even like my colleagues do it a lot. And what's fun? That zero code coverage was exactly the thing how you discover it. So I think we just. Oh, now it's better. We just dispelled our first myth. I think okay. that's funny because we forgot to cover constructor, but who cares? So we just dispelled our first myth that 0% of code coverage is always bad. Because you usually think that it's bad, but honestly, no, if you have a coverage lower than you expect, and you definitely know that you wrote some tests, Sometimes it shows you that the code was not executed. And one of the reasons why the code was not executed, simply because we were using wrong engine. So zero code coverage, it actually can help you to debug your issues, your problems with your tests. So technically, code coverage can be even seen as a debugging tool, not just a coverage tool. Debugging tool? Yes. You know what? I got an idea. Maybe we can use it for real debugging. Do you want to uh, have some crazy. fun with Eclipse? Who is using Eclipse? Is there some users? Yes, there is some users of Eclipse. Um, I don't use Eclipse. As you can see, I use IntelliJ IDEA. But it happened in my life that I inherited an Eclipse project. Actually, Jacoco integration for Eclipse, I inherited it. And I now need to maintain it. I, and I know nothing about Eclipse. And I know nothing about this plugin. But I got some bug wrapper. I need to start debugging from somewhere, and I don't know where to put the breakpoint. User says, OK, we click in Eclipse some UI button, and it doesn't work. And I don't know where to put the breakpoint. Can we solve this with code coverage? Let's so give it a try. you just been debugging Eclipse in Eclipse? I'm going to debug Eclipse in Eclipse. I'm going to start Eclipse application from the Eclipse with the code coverage measurement. Let's see how it goes. Do I have, yes, here is Eclipse. It's starting. So you see, he started Eclipse ID from the Eclipse ID. You can start so IntelliJ <laughs> from IntelliJ. That's, so that can also start. works. So here is our Eclipse ID. Here is some test project. We are debugging code coverage plugin. Here is its button. Yeah, something doesn't work here. So we want to know what happens when I hover over this menu item. And to do so, we come back in the previous Eclipse systems. We say, reset whatever you collected about at coverage for, for the current run. Let's get a zero. Yes, we are at zero. Now we come back and we do the action. We hover over. Here you see some exception happen, and that's exactly what we want to debug. And we gather code coverage one more time. And we get something in there. Internal UI actions, contextual launchable tester, if you open it, that's the code w which was executed when we hover it over menu element. And we can put a breakpoint. And now there. we can yeah. put a breakpoint here and start debugging. We are not going to debug this. That's fine. We dispel it, I think, another myth. Yes, we just dispelled another mean that myth that code coverage is only used to measure coverage. Because you can see you can use code coverage to debug and even get information about what was executed, what was not executed in your production system. OK. Do you have more examples for me where I should yes. write some tests? Yeah. Yes. Let's continue dispelling our main need here. So I prepared uh, hmm. the function to find out the best conference in the city. You can see that in Copenhagen it was KotlinConf because we just came back from KotlinConf. Anybody here were at KotlinConf? Oh, it was an amazing conference. Uh, and about uh, the point of the conference that the recordings are so great there, so you don't have to visit the talks, you can just see the recordings. 
so they're awesome. Looking forward for the recordings out of there. You um, wrote quite some a good amount of cases here. I need to write yes. quite I a wanted bunch you of to suffer. I wanted you to suffer more, like That's four okay. times. I think you need just four cases here. Okay. It's, G prime, uh, I it's expect you to Sophia. have copy paste issue here somewhere, no? I did copy paste. Yeah. Do you like J, J prime here? G nation. Yeah. It's the best conference in Sofia. Honestly, it's the only conference I know in Sofia. <laughs> but I, I really love it. So I loved it so much last year. So I came back, came back here this year. Are you ready? Is it good? Yeah, perfect. I think we covered everything. Yes, we covered everything. So there is start. four enum values I can pass on the four, yeah, we cannot four values. Cover anything more? Let's try to test it. Okay. And okay. It's pretty fast. So what is Jacko gonna tell us? Jacko tells that something is not covered. I don't know, you developed this tool. Well, it tells us default branch it tells is us not that covered. The default branch is not covered, but how can we cover it? I've heard some rumors that we can cover cases like this with mocking. Let's okay. try to mock. Can you write mock? Um, I never use mock at work, actually, but why not? Let's use Makita to so mock. So this is the way to the principal engineer, never use mock? Yeah, I don't like mocks. You write stops, you don't need mocks. Because I've been using and I'm not a principal. So, my keto. So we want a null value, right? We want a null. So let me return null. When what? When my mock and when I um, ask for a best conference. Whatever. Example, Copenhagen lets me write an assertion. So we expect null when we pass Copenhagen. Oh, we can simplify this to assert now, right? Good. And this was not a compiler. This was IntelliJ. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Enough. Let's run. Run. All good. Uh, I think we need to generate a record. My test passes? Okay. It was, it passed before. <laughs> it was passed before. Yeah, I need a coverage report. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, generate report. Let's see how it's going. Nothing Still not changed. covered. You know what? I think, and I've seen this many times, even in Makita issue tracker, I've seen that. Makita doesn't work with code coverage. I mean, Jacob, Mocking I, doesn't work with code coverage. Let me explain you what I think. Probably you forgot, or because you never wrote mocks, you don't know. So the point is that code coverage shows you what was executed. Yes? You mocked what? You mocked the function best conference. Yes? yes. So why do you think it's going to be executed if you just mocked it? Isn't it how you're supposed to write mocks? No. No. You mock something, can't I serve? No. no, that's not how it works. So, no. Code coverage works with mocks. We just need to write proper mocks. So in our case, we need to mock what? We need to mock a enum. Can Next. you mock enum? Enum is final. Let's try. Like, uh, who believes that Makita can mock enum? Who believes it cannot? I think we just broke the audience. <laughs> OK. Um, we do a switch by ordinal. So yes. let's return minus 1. and. Let's use our mock here. Oh. And here we need to use a real instance, right? Is it better? Yes, let's try it like this. Let's try. I hope it will be okay this time. So you can see at least it's passed. So Yay. and everything is covered. So now you can learn that Makita can work uh, in Noom. And we just dispelled another myth that code coverage doesn't work with mocks. Got coverage. Can you show me the myth? I can. So, busted. busted. But Cause. you know what? I still don't believe you. Like, sorry, mocking enum, mocking final classes is like a black magic to me. And you know, black mm -hmm. magic has a tendency to break from time to time. Like new GVM version comes out. Can I check which version we are using? It's Java 21. Today is almost 23 release. It's coming. Can I try latest early access build of 23 Java? Yeah. Go ahead. Can I? Oops. Let me select it. Latest early access build of OpenGDK 23. Same test. Don't do this in production. 
Uh, come on. It, it even seems to crash some dump, I don't know. Come on. Black magic, never good. It, it has a tendency to break from time to time when okay, you don't expect it. but it works on the released version. Yeah, okay. fine, but we need to maintain this code, I don't know, for how many other conferences. Okay, what would you suggest? I would suggest, come on, we, we are in Java 23 mode now. We have so many wonderful features. We have switch expression. You know that mm -hmm. for switch statement, yes, Jacoco cannot ignore this default branch as, as, as compiler cannot, because, well, compiler requires in a switch statements to have a default case. But for switch expressions, they can be exhaustive if they're done by enums and we list all values of enumeration. So they don't require the default case. Can we write a code? It's, it's yeah. just better. Like just this. in case if there are people from JetBrains, we need a refactoring. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. We Maybe we need a people work. from Sonar to teach us, right? <laughs> from Jedburg. Okay, and we don't need Makita now, right? And we should get a 100% coverage, correct? Let's try. Yay, they were successful. So but that's not enough code coverage. That's not enough. Let's check a code coverage. Ooh. 100. Congratulations. So it okay, works good. even on 23 early access. Cool. And we don't need to mock enums. Yeah. Right. So next mm -hmm. example? Yeah, let's go and see what I prepared next for you. What's that? Oh, seems that now you learned that we are in a wonderful world of Java 23. We use switch expression here. We even use some sealed interface, some records implementing this sealed interface. Okay, what you're doing here? You are, you are, seems that you wanted me to test how you compute perimeter of some shape, right? Yes, okay. because it was a long time ago when I used this. Uh, in my let's life. Try. I might forgot how to write perimeter. And uh, just in case, uh, we are not using TDD here because we try to dispel myth, but in your life you should use TDD and you will avoid a lot of problems that we are showing. So use TDD. And uh, what are you doing? You're checking perimeter. I'm writing some basic stupid tests. Okay. And we need to test square. No, square we tested. We need to we test, test rectangle. rectangle. Is it good? Yeah, looks good. Like Do you think there we is covered two everything? cases, rectangle yeah. and square. Yeah. I think we covered everything. Yes, yes. got you coverage. Run. I need to go to the director. Have you run the tests? No, yes. I'm going to run them. They pass. So let's look at the code coverage. Ouch. Isn't Something is not covered. There was just two branches come in. Let's, let's look. look what happens in there. You know, you developed this tool. Why are you asking me? Look, there is some branches. That's pretty weird, right? Like, why there is four branches? And you there know. is like... Maybe that's because you switched to an early access. Ah, let's try a different Java version. We are currently at what? At 23 early access. Let's go back to the LTS, the stable one, right? Even code coverage can break on early access, not only yeah. Makita. We go back to the 21, let's run the same. Yay, 100 person. No? Where? No. <laughs> I always forget that you're colorblind. <laughs> I'm all colorblind. <laughs> but <Okay>. for him. <laughs> I, I need to do clean. I guess I need to do clean, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All now green now. Better. Now it's all green. All green. So, you, as you can see, sometimes uh, code coverage can be broken because of compiler version. All the tools that exist yeah. nowadays on the market, JetBrains Coverage Engine, Cobertura, whatever, Jacoco, they all base it on the bytecode. They all base it on the result of compilation. So if you change the compiler version, don't expect that numbers like uh, branches or instructions or whatever classes, the numbers are not going to change. If you change compiler, you change result of compilation. And you're obviously going to get some different numbers. 
But I think that's something that you're going to fix or GDK will fix. <laughs> For this case, yeah, we will probably need to look into the bytecode and see what else compiler generated here, and maybe we need to ignore that. Yeah. But in general, well, numbers might be different. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's uh, proceed. Let's move on. Example. Uh, four. And you again want me to write some tests. Yes. What do we I do? I decided to simplify a little bit your life, and I just prepared two cases this time. Ah, this time two cases. Thank you very much. I hate writing tests. Oh, look. Chat GPT is help. Oops. Chat GPT. Not chat GPT. Ah, co Copilot. Copilot helping me. Kotlin conf, G prime. Uh, but it still cannot get your way of formatting. Yeah, I just want to people see all the cases that we have here. So Is it good? Two cases, right? We use switch expression. Should be fine, right? Yeah. And y you know what? We are showing to the people only one tool, Jacoco, right? It, it doesn't look nice. We are promoting our own tool. Let's maybe show something different. Can I measure code coverage in ID? Yes, I yes, can. Yes, let's do. 100%. That was easy. I learned how to write tests. So IntelliJ says there is 100% test coverage. Um, should we show some other tool? Yeah, maybe let's check. Uh, I don't know. We work at Sonar. Maybe let's, let's check Sonar. But just in one case for but one case. You know what? Sonar does not generate code coverage. Sonar uses Jacoco and imports Jacoco report. I know. I am maintaining this plugin. But you still want to see the Sonar? Yes. Okay. That's, that's weird. Do you expect... Uh, something different to be shown in Sonar? Let's then see. Like, I hope that since Sonar uses JCoC under the hood, that numbers should be the same. Do you expect this? I think people... Otherwise, we won't be hearing. So let's see. You're developing developer of this slow tool, right? You should speed it up a little bit. We have yeah. community forum. We can... Redirect all your questions there. Okay, overall code. 100% coverage. Uh, SonarCube will agree with uh, JetBrains coverage engine. Look, 100%. Okay, perfect. Let's try JCoCo. I already executed JCoCo. We just need to open its report. Exactly the same report that was imported into SonarCube. Ouch. Oops. You can see it. The, right. same, the same code coverage measuring tool and different numbers. Why? It says that this line is only partially executed, while in uh, IntelliJ and in Sonar, it was executed completely. What, what to cover on this line? Can I do the quick test? Like, if I move this on another line, there is lambda, right? Yeah. It's probably because of lambda. Let's see. Yes. The partially covered line also moves. So. The Jacko code tells me that I never reach the lambda, right? Yes. But Sonar Cube is unable. That's sad. Yeah, yeah. And the thing, the point is that line coverage is not enough. There are other measurements like instruction coverage, like like branch coverage. I guess we busted another myth. In in the meantime, code yes. coverage is the same in all the tools. Yeah. That's wrong. So yeah, Please first look of all, at the documentation yeah. of the tools, what they're showing, what they're yeah. measuring, etc. And you're saying we busted another one, like line coverage is enough? Yeah, line coverage is not enough. There is instruction coverage, there is... Uh, um, let's instruction inst coverage, branch, branch coverage. coverage. For a reason. Because sometimes you can write everything mm. on one line, and Jikoko can tell you that line is covered only if everything is covered on that line. Other tools might think that if something was covered on the line, then line is covered. So, yeah, that's why the tools differ and numbers can be different. This time I want to believe I know how to use mocking because, again, I need to cover the case that never happens. So let's do what? Do return optional empty when I ask for mock get best conference uh, sorry Kotlin Geigen 
Let's not offend Sophie. Uh, mock, uh, get best yeah. conference. No, I should return optional and even a load conference and then ask for the Copenhagen. Is it better like this? Let's try. Let's try. Yes. Yes, all green. Is so it better? So of course. Instruction thing. coverage 100%, branch coverage 100%. Is it enough? I think let's try another tool here. Why Which not? Tool? Which one? I think p -test. What is p -test? Can test is a tool for mutation coverage. I, like, have you heard about this tool? Yeah, Some so people heard. Let's show what it is. Let's show what it is. And let's see. Maybe it will show us something interesting. P-test. Here is a P-test report. So P-test says that something is line not Line coverage completely. is 100%, but mutation coverage is not. What is mutation coverage? Let's look. So how P-test works? The test actually makes some modification to your source code and calls this modification a mutant. So if after this modification your tests passed, it means that mutants survived and your tests are not really good. But if um, your tests fail, it means that some test catched uh, caught this modification to your source code and that your tests are really good. So here it tells us that our tests are bad and one mutant survived. Replace return value with now for first lambda in best conference. Let's what? just do it, what it just suggests, and let's see. It suggests then. that here I need to remove what I need to return now. Yes. Does it make sense? Like, let's see. I need to run tests. Yes. yes. They will pass? No, come on, it's null pointer exception, right? No, let's see. Oh. So test passed. passed. Huh. That's interesting. Let's see what kind of exception we are getting here. And I think that's the problem because we are expecting runtime exception, but runtime exception can happen at any point. Maybe we need to test it more precisely. We, we need runtime exception. Ah, we need runtime. I'm, but you said you are pretty sure it's no point of exception. Ah, okay. Depends on what you want to test. Okay. I want runtime exception. No, this is a null pointer exception. And then our test yes, failed because null pointer the exception. actual exception that we get is null pointer exception. Hmm. So the proper way to test it would be to test with a message. Yeah, and we also wanted a message. Okay. <sighs> So we wanted a message. Let's restore the message. Conference not found. Conference not found. Is it better now? Yeah. And now our test, we, we restored the behavior, a test passed, and I think. And we should check, we mutation, check mutation coverage, testing. right? Yes. Okay. So, drum roll. Yay. Yeah. But you know what? Mutation coverage tells us 100%. Code coverage tells us 100%. But there is still some issue with this code. You know what? Customer wanted to load uh, conferences from the database. Okay. And we are not testing this. We are not developing this. That's, that's bad. I think we just misspelled uh, some other myth. Yes. First of all, 100% of code coverage does not guarantee test quality. Because it, as you can see, your code coverage might be 100%, but mutation coverage can still find some issues. So you're saying that mutation coverage. And this is another myth, that you might think that mutation coverage 100% guarantees the quality of your software. But this is actually not true because no tool can guarantee the quality of your software because you no tool can like know the requirements for your software so what's next do we have more examples we run out of examples what should we do i think we should step back a little bit step back and what and look prob probably at the sonar reports yeah indeed 
we just wrote some nice code. It has 100% code coverage. It's a nice project, no issues. I know there is some maintainability issues, but just a few of them. That's fine, but 100% test coverage. And we have another project. What a chance. It is a Jacoco project. Actually, the tool that we the used The tool that here. measures code coverage, here is a code coverage for this tool, and you know what? It's not 100%. It have 100%? No. No. How can we trust this tool? Um, that's a good question. Uh, who is going to trust this tool if code coverage is not 100%? Well, this tool has been there like for 15 years on the market. And look, what is not tested here? Let, let's look what is not tested here. There is some switch, and in this switch, Default case is not tested. This switch happens by, again, you know. I would love to rewrite this code to use switch expression, but unfortunately, this tool still supports Java 5, Java 6. There is no switch expression. You are doomed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but no, come on. I'm, I'm not going to write some stupid mocks here. I'm not yeah. going to get some dependency on mocking framework, which can break with the next uh, GDK so. release. I'm just going to ignore that. It's, it's fine. This code been in production how many years? Like, uh -huh. I committed this code in 2017. Yes. It's already seven years. It works fine. So what we are trying to say here, in order to achieve 100% coverage, we did a lot of stupid tricks. Like we mocked in a, a noom. We wrote code. We like did some stupid things. And this was just to please the tool to make it 100%. It does not make sense. You should not cover everything. You should cover only the things that you wrote that matter. You know what? I was not pleasing the tool. I was pleasing my manager, you. So I think code coverage is not for managers. Yeah. So another myth that we want to dispel here is that code coverage is a developer metric. You can show or you cannot show it to your managers, but it should not be your goal to achieve some percentage. Your goal should be a good quality of your software. So code coverage is for developers. Cool. Um, Let's move on. I just got another idea. We should test probably something else than just the persons. What do you think? What we you should mean? test physics, right? We're engineers. Yeah. We should test some physics laws. Let's do like, it. Let's remember observer effect from the physics. If you observe something, you are changing observable. So if we measure code coverage, we are probably changing behavior of what we measure. Can we prove this or this spell? Um, let me write some benchmark. Actually, yes. this time I prepare it in advance. Let first me run time. it. Yeah, first time. So while it's executed, I'm going to explain you what is happening here. I have a pretty simple code which computes just the Fibonacci numbers. Given an index of a Fibonacci number, it's going to return me the Fibonacci number. And I do ins oops, where we are. I do instrument it using the Jacoco code coverage tool. And you used GMH. Yeah. And yes, here I use Java Micro Benchmark Harness GMH from OpenGDK. And uh, I run this code. I run actually an empty method just to see that I'm measuring something and not a thin air. Uh, I execute original code without any code coverage measurement, and then I, I, I also measure the code uh, uh, instrumented one where we have code coverage measurement. So what do we see here? We see that not operation where we're not doing anything. It's pretty fast. It's good. We are measuring just the fact of calling a method. Mm -hmm. Then we see original. It's obviously slower because we well need to compute uh, Fibonacci number. And then we see Jacoco code coverage. It's even slower than the original. So what you're saying that actually by introducing code coverage, we might change the behavior or at least affect the performance of coverage. So another myth that we dispelled now here is that measuring code coverage does not affect your application because it affects, first of all, in performance wise, and I think there are also could be cases when you just broke the correctness. Yes, well, the performance is not such a big problem. Like, we do you unit think testing. So? Uh, come on, it, it's, it's been a less than persons mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. impact. Okay. Maybe we don't want to put this into production, 
that's that might be fair. But well, 10 persons loss on execution of unit test, it might be acceptable if you want to have <coughs> measurement of code coverage. And you know what? Actually, uh, there is a guy uh, who recently wrote a blog post on friends of Java Food J. They actually wrote a nice blog post saying they put a code coverage measurement in the production to see which code is never touched by users to delete it. And they actually claim that for their application, not for the Fibonacci numbers, for their applications, the impact isn't that big. It was, I think, less than one person. And for them, it was acceptable. So, well, measure and don't trust out of thin air some random measurements yeah. of Fibonacci numbers. Okay, but and we well, should keep in mind that we still affect it. Yeah, we still affect it. And if performance is not such a big issue, you're right. What if we change the behavior of applications? This will be a disaster. Thanks God, we do develop Jaco. We try to not affect behavior of the application. Unfortunately, I think we have a time. I can show you the case where we affect behavior of the application. Let's look. So I have. It's probably something from Android, yes? It actually happens on GVM as well. But oh. let's have a look. Here we have another example. Um, there is a little bit of bytecode generation because it's pretty hard to generate this example by hand. Uh, this example never happens in the compiler-generated code. Uh, compiler-generated code, uh, code coverage tools learn at what compiler-generated code produce, and they can correctly instrument it. But unfortunately, if the code was obfuscated like this happens on Android, or if this code was produced but by not so nice compiler like a Groovy compiler, Groovy compiler ge generates something similar, then strange things could happen after instrumentation by Jekyll. What do we have here? We are going to execute a GVM process where we are going to ask to compile the bytecode by JIT. And we are also going to ask, hey, could you please show that all the monitors in our program, all synchronized blocks are perfectly matched, that there is no breaking synchronization, that synchronization works and not broken. We are going to run this without instrumentation by Jaco, and we expect to see no warnings at all. And we are going to run this with instrumentation by Jaco. Let's see what we are going to see. But you probably can already guess. There is a search on. We are going to see that JIT compiler tells us, yes, we found a monitor mismatch in the method, non-empty monitor stack at exceptional exit. And JIT compiler, we actually didn't broke the behavior of application because G, uh, hotspot JIT compiler is pretty nice. It tells us that some property is broken, but in order for this program to behave correctly, we are going to affect performance and not the correctness. We are going to execute this method, which has broken synchronization, in the interpreter, and everything is going to be fine for correctness. That's a nice bug. Uh, keep cool. If you are not Android developer, you are probably never, go never going to face that. Hopefully, we are going to fix this How in Jekyll. How about Groovy? Groovy, well, hopefully you are not, not using, using Groovy. <laughs> but sooner or later, well, we will fix that, I hope. It's not an easy property to preserve uh, synchronization and structured locking, but, well, we will work on but the fix for this. you're pointing somewhere, yeah? yeah? I'm pointing on myself, yes, we should fix that. So, effects busted. Yeah, I think so. Do you have more examples, or we are coming to I the end? I think we are closer to the end of the presentation. Should we wrap up? Yeah, I guess we should. So, the very first myth that we wanted to dispel, should code coverage be 100%? Do you think it should be 100%? I, I don't think anymore. So, I hope that after all the things that we showed you, you might, you might understand that code coverage should not be 100% and you should not aim for 100%. What's important that code coverage should be at the level where everything that is supposed to be covered is covered. Yeah, that's harder to, like, than just to aim some numbers, but here we are. In the ideal world, of course, we would like to have everything covered. We would like to have 100%, but the world is not ideal. There are some compiler-generated things. There are some other stuff that we cannot cover. There are some things in business logic that we cannot cover or some 
other stuff. So we cannot make it 100%. It would be nice if somewhere in the tools, like in Sonar or in JCOC or anywhere, we would like easily say that, okay, we accept this code coverage or we won't fix that code coverage misses. Like for example, we have four issues and then we could uh, think about 100% in some of the contexts. But unfortunately, we don't have it. You have finger pointing at somebody here, right? I, think I should have checked this slide before we came on stage, right? You wanted me to implement this thing? I think we both can implement it either in JCOCO or in Sonar, because currently in Sonar, if there are some code coverage misses, you cannot just ignore them. You cannot say that I accept it. You have to deal with it somehow. But every time we implement something like suppressed warnings or no Sonar, mm -hmm. you know what comes the next day? What? Who is going to test? The tester. The tester. Who is going to, somebody is, who is going to watch the watchman? Somebody is going to come and say, oh yes, I want to monitor now this metric. I want to find all the places where we suppress that warning. I want to find all the places where we accepted zero code coverage. We need AI here to judge uh, whether suppression was good or not. I don't know. I think, as I told you in the beginning of this presentation, we all are doomed here. So we just have to somehow figure it out because I think we are smart, you know. So we busted the myth that cut coverage should be 100%. I hope you agree. And there are a few points that we want you to take away from our presentation. First of all, Code coverage is a developer metric, don't show it to managers and don't aim to sum the percentage of the code, but uh, use it. Tools are not ideal. As you can see that there are cases where JCO breaks or where IntelliJ code coverage breaks, where Sonar is not ideal because like, we are, it's all developed by human. Human are not perfect, tools are not perfect, but they're still helpful. Even if something is broken in JCOCO, it still can be helpful because you investigate it, you still find some issues and you learn. So don't hesitate to use them. And never please the tools. Never try to write stupid code, never try to write stupid mocks to please the tools. Test what is supposed to be tested. And yeah, use them smartly. So I think that's it. Thank you for joining us. And we have a five minutes for questions. Yeah. I don't know if we have a mic for questions. Yeah, mic is coming, no need to shout. We need to find a mic because I barely can hear from the first row or you need to shout Do louder. You just pretend that you <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to pretend that I haven't heard this question. Uh, the question, if I heard correctly, the question was when we plan to increment the first major number for the Jakarta, right? Why do you care about this number? <laughs> really big, okay. Um, well, I'm again playing like a manager here, I return it a question back to you. Um, the thing is, um, every time when we break something, people come back to us and say, you know what, you're not Samware compliant, you should have incremented the major because you broke something. But the truth is, we are perfectly Samware compliant. If you will go and read what Samware says, semantic versioning says, as soon as your third, first major number is zero, it's a pre-production. You're free to break whatever you want. And that's exactly what we wanted to preserve. This is actually a toy project. This is, we don't make a business out of it. Well, it couldn't be a toy project with millions of users. Well, it just happened that it went viral, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's developed by just two persons and the very first person did it for his own needs. And then he saw it like, Mark, my friend from Germany, he, he thought like, okay, if I have this need, I develop it, this tool, I will just make it open source. And then I join it and we do work on it in our spare time. We, we actually just having some bytecode fun here. 
we never committed to not break things. So we wanted to preserve this ability to break things if we want. Unfortunately, yes, two went viral. Now there is thousands of users, and even with zero, if you break something, we... I, I regret we need a picture here with Boromir, who says one does not simply write an open source project. Yes. Well, but okay, seriously, uh, you expect something huge here coming. Um, what about following? Uh, I hope soon we are going to break Java 5 compatibility. Is it big enough? <laughs> Is Mark aware? I will let him know. No worries. More questions? Sorry? What? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the question was, with all those users uh, using the project, with all those thousands, I don't know, millions of users, did we get more committers uh, contributing to the project? And unfortunately, the answer is no. Unfortunately, is, well, there have been some contributions, but those people, they don't stick, they come, they contribute a few lines of code, and then they disappear. They don't stay as, a, I don't know, one year or two years maintainers. Uh, for the whole life of this project, there is just two people who are maintaining it. And that's not something specific to Jekyll There is plenty of open source tools use it everywhere in the world and maintain it by just one or two persons. Another great tool is ASM. Do you know ASM? ASM is used everywhere in Jekako, in Makito, in Hibernate, in what? A spring, I think. In Spring. ASM is everywhere. And this tool is maintained just by two guys and this is not their main job. One of them works in a Google on something different. Another one is a teacher in university. And they maintain it, maintain it for you. If tomorrow it breaks, half of the world is going to be broken. So, by the way, another takeaway maybe that you can take out of this talk and thanks to this question. If you know some open source tool that you are using, relying on, I'm not asking you to go and maintain it. It might be hard, like maintenance of Jekako, reading the bytecode, it's hard. But at least one thing you can do. Go and say thank you. Those guys, they receive bug reports only. They never receive any thank you. They receive only bug reports. 